In this video, Paul Mohindi will take you through the step-by-step -step process of setting up, managing and integrating Revit with Robots Structural Analysis software and then back again from Robots Structure to Revit. So if you want to learn the process of optimizing your structural modeling and analysis process, then watch this video till the end. So with that, let's get started. So I assume that you have your physical model that you have just modeled within Revit and you do not have any analytical model from it. So to begin, you first need to create your analytical model from your existing physical Revit model. So basically, an analytical model is the backbone of any structural analysis. It's basically the item that is being transferred from Revit to Robo Structural Analysis. And in this case, we have this physical model and I'll share it with you, so kindly download it. It's a non-analytical model. So what I simply mean, it does not have any analytical model. If any of us to navigate under the project browser and click on the analytical model just to open it, it will be just an empty screen. So the first thing that we need to do is to come up with the analytical model. So let me just have these two windows side by side. So I'll click on 3D, click on my workspace, then click on WT on my keyboard just to have these two windows side by side. After that, I'll just simply navigate to the Analyze tab and under that tab, I'll find the Structural Analytical Model panel. Then I'll click on the Analytical Automation option. This command is available from Revit 2023 to the current Revit versions. So I'll just simply click on this command once and this pop-up window will be shown. So this is basically the analytical automation window, which is simply running under Dynamo. So you'll find this first option, which is choose folder. If you cannot find these two options here, you'll just click on this icon to add folder. So for my case, these two scripts are found under the local C, program data, Autodesk, Revit 2004, Dynamo, samples, en-gb, Revit Analytical Automation. For your case, because of the different Revit version, it might be any other version rather than 2004. And for you to add it, you just simply click on this button and it will navigate to that specific folder. Remember, for my case, it's just found under this area. That's why it has navigated to this area. So I'll just simply click on Cancel because I already have it here. Then I'll just simply click on Cancel. But for your case, if you have added it here, you'll just click on OK. So I'll click on cancel. If you have many scripts down here, you can just simply search, but for our case, we just have two of them. The first one being analytical to physical for BDLs. So this simply means in Revit, you can be able to start from an analytical model, then transform it to a physical model. This is simply very easy, especially for structural engineers. If you just want to do your analysis first to see if that specific model can be able to withstand the loads, then you can be able to generate the physical. But for our case, we have the physical model. So we just simply want to come up with the analytical model, which is basically the model that will be analyzed in robot. Then we can be able to do the analysis. So this is our physical model here. And for you to run it, you just click on this play button. But if you wanted to edit it, you could have click on this icon, which is edit in Dynamo, and the Dynamo script will have launched. But that is not our primary focus. Let's just run. So I'll click on play once. So after a few seconds, this pop-up window will be shown. So under here is just basically the description, the author of this specific script, which is Autodesk. So under this inputs, you'll just simply input the items that you're working with. For my case, the first item is to select the items for our physical items from the model, which will do the last one. The second item is to adjust the analytical elements using the connectivity rules. So kindly make sure that you leave this one on so that it follows the connectivity rules. This is more advanced, so just leave it as true. The second item is about tolerance of the distance between the analytical elements. So depending with the project units that you're working with, for my case, I'm using millimeters and this simply means 0.35 millimeters. It's very small. So I'll just simply input something like 500 millimeters just to make sure that this tolerance is at a bigger scale. The next item is to adjust the analytical elements to the nearest level, which I prefer this, just to remove any issues or any errors that might arise. 
This next thing is still about the tolerance, so I'll just pump it up up to 500 millimeters. And then we'll have grouping, so all these others I'll just leave them as is. And then I'll go to the fifth item, which is inherit properties for the physical elements, such as the materials, cross section types, so on and so forth. I want that to want to remain, so I'll just leave it as true. The sixth item is to create analytical openings for selected floors and walls. When you're coming up with the analytical model, this one causes some issues or some mistakes sometimes. So I'll give you a caution, just use this when you're sure. But for my case, I'll just leave it as false. And for the seventh item is to associate the physical counterparts, which simply means if the analytical model is a column, if I click on it, it will be able to integrate it or relate it with the specific physical part in the model. I'll be showing you how this one works. Once that's done, this will be under output. So let's just first go and put our input by selecting our physical elements. I'll click on select. Then I will select in Revit. So it will give us this prompt here. So all I have to do is to open my dashed window. So I just click from right to left. So I'm dragging. I've clicked the first point. Then I'm just gliding up to the next point. Release my button and I have everything selected we'll find out that a total of 125 items have been selected. If you want to show, you can click on this. You can check the item ID or the element ID and this will be it. So we have done everything. All that remains is just to click on run and to be able to get our outputs. So just click on run once. And right now it's simply generating all these elements for our analytical model. So it will be generated here and you can clearly see that it has been generated and everything is finished. I can now click on back, then click on close, and I'll be left with my analytical model. So I'm just simply zooming out, and I can be able now to orbit by holding down my shift and my center wheel mouse button, just like that. So what I was trying to explain to you, in the event that you select an analytical member like this one, if I click highlight association, you can clearly see that it is being highlighted on this physical model. So even if I select, let's say a panel, so, in the event that you cannot be able to select it directly, just simply hit on the tab and you can be able to cycle through specific elements, then just simply click on highlight association. And just like that, we now have our analytical model. So after doing that, the next thing that we need to do is just to assign our loads and our boundary conditions. So I'll just simply go back to the analyze tab and from here I'll find loads and I'll just simply specify the type of load that I want. If it's the area load, I'll use this. I'll make sure to just place it on host. Then I'll give it the information if it's the dead load. Let's say we go with negative three kilo newtons per square meter. I'll just simply select the top area just like that. I'm just simply selecting the panels and the load is just being added. Once that's done, all I have to do is let's say even change the load. So I'll just go to this drop down menu, select the load that I want, give it the specific, let's say loading that I want like so, and then just simply add it to that specific panel like that. After doing that, all I have to do is hit on escape to cancel from there. Then I'll just use the boundary conditions. So this is basically for the columns. I'll use point and I'll make sure that it's fixed. I'll make sure that the state is fixed. Then I'll just simply select the base or the end of our columns like so. So I'll just make sure that all of them are selected one by one. I can be able to use other options to isolate, but because our project is very small, that is sufficient. After doing that, all that remains is now just to send our model to robot structural analysis. And to do that, still under the Analyze tab, you'll find the Structural Analysis panel. From here, you'll find this icon with this drop-down icon. If you click on it, you'll have these two options. So if I click on the Robot Structural Analysis link, I'll be able to get this pop-up window, which allows me to send my analytical model from Revit to my Autodesk Robot Structural Analysis. And for this case, we'll be using the version 2004, so for my case, I have it already installed and it's already here, but I've not even opened it. You don't need to have it running. 
All you have to do is just simply select on this option, click on send model because you're sending it the first time, then click on the type of integration you're using, the direct integration, then you can select the sending option. If you want the self switch to be placed under the dead load one, you just simply select that, do not use these other options, or you can ignore the self weight, but for my case, I prefer retaining the self weight, then I'll click on OK, and all that remains is just simply click on OK and I'll find this option here. So currently it's now exporting and you'll find that now our software is now starting up. It has already started up and it will start to create all the items that are from the Revit model. Then we'll find this report. So if I want to read the report, I'll just click on yes. I want to see the errors. It's just saying that the settings are not in United States. They are in Euro, some of them. So just that's the way we have sent our model to robot. So if I want to see the section shapes, I'll click on this. If I want to view, let's say the colors, I'll click on V on my keyboard to bring this shortcut, which is basically the display. Then I'll just simply go to mark with colors. I'll mark with member types. I'll click on apply. I'll click on okay. And we can clearly see this is the same model that we had in Revit. So if I place them side by side, I can clearly see that this is our 3D here. This is our analytical model here, and this is our robot model here. So all that remains is just simply to run the calculation. Obviously, if you don't know how to use robot, kindly check our free course that we have in our website, where you need to define all these materials, where you need to find your database, your design codes, and so on and so forth. But for this, I'll just do it very roughly. I'll just click on calculate, it will do a calculation. I'll have my results available here. So let me just place it full screen. And if I want now to see the results, I just simply go to results. I go, let's say to, to maps and under maps, we can check on the deformation. I can click on active, I can click on start. So we can just see how the building will be deforming. So this is just basically how it is. We have a maximum displacement of about nine uh, millimeters, which is allowable. So it's not an issue. And if I want to come up with a reinforcement, it's very simple. I just simply select everything like so, or I can just, let's say, design only for the members. I just go here, select all members, and then just click on this provide reinforcement, and the calculation will be done automatically in Robot. Robot is a very powerful structural analysis software. So I'll just click on automatically run, click on OK. So we are designing this in accordance to Eurocode. So depending on the code that you usually use, we can see down here that the analysis is being done in the calculation. Robot is very powerful and really fast. So over here, we have some of our slanted columns uh, given this warning here. And this is now designed for beams in accordance to BSEN. So I'll just simply click on OK just to proceed. And just like that, we have already finished designing for our members. And these are the beams. If I want to look at the reinforcement, I just simply click on that and I can just see the reinforcement of our beams. So this is how our beams are being reinforced. And uh, I like it. I don't have no issue whatsoever. If I click on this tree, we can see that our columns have passed and we have the chain here. So everything is looking good. If I want to get my, my foundations, I just simply click on front select this down area, just open my dash window like that. And then I click on my provide reinforcement. It will simply start with the column. And after the column, it will now go to the next one, which is the foundation. So now this is the foundation of spread footing and it's in accordance to the BSEN 1990 and geotechnical regulations. I'll click on okay. And just like that, it's already done. I just go to this level, click on this tree and I can just simply see our foundations over here. And if I want the results, we have the results here. It's a very detailed result. If I want to see the reinforcements, this is how the reinforcements will be looking like inside our foundation. So that's the bottom and this is the top. So this is how we can be able to reinforce our pad footings for our foundation. And if I want the note, we will just simply get the note which can be able to send back to our structural engineer. All right, so now we have seen how to send our model from Revit to robot. So after we have done our analysis and we have found out that our design is person, it's just a matter of sending it back to Revit with that information. So how do we do that? You just simply navigate to Audience. Under Audience, you'll find the integration option. Then simply navigate to Autodesk Revit, click on this option once. And in this case, you'll be sending the model and results. 
and under direct integration and all you have to do is to click on okay alternatively you can just simply navigate back to revit and under revit still under the analyze tab under the structure you navigate to auto to robot structural analysis click on the same command the link and instead of clicking sending model we'll be using update model and results so you can look at the update options so for your case it's grayed out but if you just wanted to update a certain part of the structure or only specified elements you can update that but for our case it's not an option so we'll just click on okay because we have updated everything and then for the structural results package you can give it a name let's say a while for the reinforcement we can just give it r so i'll just click on that and then place an r and then i'll just click on okay so all that data from robots is now being sent back to revit where we can be able to analyze it and also use it for design purposes so this comes in handy especially when you're working as two different teams so you can just click on yes to look at the warnings or any issue so the required reinforcement results are not available because i've not done the required reinforcement it's not an issue i'll just click on okay and if i just jump back to revit you can just look at results explorer so we want to see let's say the reactions of let's say dead load we want to see how it acts on our specific structure so i can just uh, place my 3d around here and i can just say i'll just check on the displacement of our members click on apply so just like that we can clearly see a detailed representation of everything that is happening we have our graph here we have our numbers here we have our envelopes been shown here and if you want to look at something else just simply uncheck the previous one and you can also look at specific uh, directions or coordinate sides let's say if i just want to look at the z direction i'll just click on z or let me first deselect that then just check on z like that then hit on apply and i'll just have that information about z and if i want to change the color style i'll just click on this and i can be able to change the color styles of everything that has been shown including using a color color and also having a line a legend from here so that's simply how we do it and it's very handy especially when two teams are working on the project let's say one team is an architectural team while the other team is a st structural team this one will come really much in handy so we can clearly see how our slanted columns are behaving how our vertical columns are behaving and everything else is behaving and this is in accordance to the dead load so you can always change let's say to live load look at the reactions here and it will be just added to the specific view that you have so this is how it is these are the moments here so everything is looking well and we have it back in our revit so that's simply how we do it and if you're interested to learn robot it's very simple you just simply navigate to your browser search on source code and you'll find this website so from here we have free content and we have free courses so I'll click on free courses and you'll have this robot structural analysis essential course which is completely free. So from here you can be able to understand how robot is used and we have gone through a project that you can be able to use to understand how this designs and how to use the software. Not only that you can also find Revit free courses. So if you want to learn about Revit you can go through this course and we also have another course which is completely under Revit Architectural that you should be able to check out, understand how to come up with architectural drawings so that you can be able to integrate it to your robot structural analysis software. So that was the step-by-step -step method of modeling and analyzing a structural model from Revit to robots. Which topic you want us to cover next? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video.